morning. morning. Welcome to worship at First Christian Church in Black Mountain. And a special word of welcome to everyone who remembered to change their clocks tonight and get here on time. We also welcome those who are worshiping with us uh, live streaming on Facebook or going to be watching later on YouTube. And our prayer is that this time of worship will be a blessing in your life. Let us begin our worship now as we listen to the morning prayer. Good morning. 
I'm Mary Thompson. Please stand in body or spirit and join me in the call to worship. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Why should we be afraid? The Lord protects us from danger. Why, Why should, should we worry? For God's house is our shelter and retreat. Here, Here we find, find peace in the turmoil of our lives. We <clears throat> Let us enter God's presence with thanksgiving and praise. We, we come offering our worship with joy. besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in the temple 
for in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. As we prepare to share ourselves with God in prayer, we share our joys and concerns with one another. We learned this week of the death of Bob Patterson, um, a uh, longtime friend of this congregation and uh, part, uh, part of the year resident at, at Crestmount. And so we remember um, Margie and, and their family in, in prayer. We continue, of course, to pray for the people of Ukraine in the ongoing war there, but we also remember other wars going on in our world, in Iraq and Yemen and Ethiopia. I also want to share a joy from our family. Um, no, it's not a new baby. <laughs> But this week, uh, we announced a new son-in-law in our family. Uh, our daughter, Naomi, and uh, her now husband, Jamie, were married in a private uh, ceremony uh, in February. Uh, we, they, they call it an elopement, but we knew about it beforehand, um, but we weren't invited to it. So, uh, as, as I uh, told, uh, I think, Glenda the other day, uh, we tried to raise uh, independent women, and uh, this, is, this is the price we pay. <laughs> but we, we uh, rejoice in uh, Naomi and, and Jamie's uh, marriage and, and their uh, life, continued life together. They've, they've uh, been, been dating or, or been together for 10 years already, so uh, we rejoice in that. They will be having a, a big celebration uh, in Richmond in, uh, in May, and so we look forward to that. Are there other joys or concerns that you wish to share with the congregation this morning? Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, I learned this week that my little sister, little, uh, little sister, oh, young yes. lady, uh, has joined the crowd of those that have had children. She's apparently okay. She's one of those that's really compromised, but she, she's okay. She can still give a jabber for an hour uh, without any troubles. <laughs> so it's in order. We pray for her and her continued uh, relative good health in, in light of that. Yes. I hope everybody prays for Phil Rollins, who is the singer in my rock band, who was taken to the hospital by ambulance on Friday night. He's there with uh, doing some look at his heart. See a cardiologist and all that. So we pray for Chris's uh, friend and, uh, and his hospital stay and for those uh, treating him. And all that. And, you know, there's. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Lord, you have called us to this journey of faith, and we want to be faithful. But there are so many other things in our lives which claim our energy and our hopes. Forgive us when we have strayed from your way, when we have chosen not to hear the cries of those in need, when we have belittled the gifts and skills that you have given us in order to avoid serving others. Help us to place our trust in you. Teach us to see beyond the news that distresses, the disappointment in our work and the insufficiency of our lives, and know that you are with us, bearing our hurts and disappointments. When we wonder if you made the right choice in calling us to your ministry and mission, ease our fears, 
confirm our hopes and bless our hearts with your loving presence and in all things you may be glorified god of peace in the face of terrible violence in ukraine and elsewhere in our world we pray for the people caught in war that they are spared trauma violence and death we pray for safety and for peace as we have offered the names and situations of those on our hearts and minds for prayer this morning help us to remember that we too are always in your loving care Now, dear God, guide our lives and our steps as we walk this journey through Lent. Awaken us, empower us, renew us to be faithful to you in the spirit of Christ. And it's in his name we pray as he taught, saying, Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. stand and sing our taxology.
precious God, we thank you for your generosity. We thank you for this opportunity to support your mission through our gifts. Bless these, this offering and those who give it, we pray. Amen. Our gospel reading comes from Luke's gospel in the 13th chapter. In Luke's gospel, uh, Jesus has been, uh, has been spending his ministry thus far in the region around Galilee. He has not been back to Jerusalem since uh, the account of him in the temple as a, as a boy. He's been healing and teaching and um, working in, in the region of Galilee. But now this is a turning point in the story and Jesus begins moving away from Galilee and towards Jerusalem. At that time, some Pharisees approached Jesus and said, Go, get away from here, because Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, Go tell that fox, Look, I'm throwing out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day, I will complete my work. However, it's necessary for me to travel today, tomorrow, and the next day, because it's impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who were sent to you, how often have I wanted to gather your people just as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you didn't want that. Look, your house is abandoned. I tell you, you won't see me until the time comes when you say blessings on the one who comes in the Lord's name. The word of God for the people of God. Before we get into the sermon, I want to uh, let you know about a notice that I received addressed to all clergy. The notice reads, How to know the warning signs of springing forward syndrome. <laughs> the first sign is unscheduled naps during the service. The inability to focus during the sermon. General grouchiness and irritability. The warning didn't say what signs I should look for in the congregation. <laughs> when I was growing up, it wasn't uncommon for our family to receive gifts of a chicken or two, live chickens. This might be a gift from Congolese friends at Christmas or New Year's. Or it might be a gift given to my father after a visit to preach in a village church somewhere, kind of a guest preacher honorarium. <coughs> These gifts were always appreciated and accepted gratefully. Sometimes we would have chicken stew the next day or two, but sometimes we would keep the chicken and let her share her eggs with us. A couple of times we had a mother hen who hatched a brood of young chicks in our backyard. It was great fun to watch the hen and her chicks scurrying around, scratching in the dirt for bugs, and enjoying the corn we'd throw out for them. Like youngsters of any species, those chicks were filled with boundless energy, a challenge for their mother to control. But if the mother hen sensed any kind of danger, she would gather those chicks around her and do her best to hide them. Of course, mom, the mother mom, I mean the, the 
chick on his mom, didn't always know what was a real danger and what wasn't. When the Cessna 206 airplane of Mission Aviation Fellowship flew over to, on its weekly flight to deliver mail and supplies, Mama Hen would see the shadow of that plane and think it was a large hawk. She'd squawk, run around trying to gather her chicks, ready to protect them from that great big scary bird in the sky, protect them as best as she could. This image of Mother Hen protecting her young is a metaphor that Jesus uses to describe his commitment and love for his followers. Jesus longs to gather them under his wings, sheltering them from the dangers of the world. Not only is Jesus displaying compassion and care, he's also showing a special kind of courage. This is a kind of courage that is willing to face danger head on, to accept challenges and responsibilities that he could possibly have avoided. The Pharisees come and warn Jesus that he should get out of town because Herod is out for his blood. We don't know who these particular Pharisees are or what their motivations were, and it doesn't really matter. We just know that they come to tell Jesus to run and save his life, and that Jesus refuses. Instead, Jesus will keep to the plan, keep heading toward Jerusalem to fulfill his mission and inevitably meet his death there, like so many earlier prophets of God. While we can admire the steadfast courage that Jesus displays in telling Herod, you're not the boss of me. I'll do what I came here to do. And the courage to continue towards Jerusalem and the cross on behalf of the world that God loves so much. Jesus is also showing that this kind of courage has a, an element of vulnerability. Jesus accepts the challenge and suffering and refuses to look away. And in that, he makes himself vulnerable for the sake of others. I think this is important to realize because choosing to be vulnerable is countercultural and counterintuitive. As a culture, we don't often equate vulnerability with strength and courage. We see vulnerability as a sign of weakness, something to be avoided at all costs. For example, candidates for political office are not rewarded for their expressions of vulnerability or their honesty and candor, but by their blustering and bullying and self-promotion. At our best, we may recognize the need to be vulnerable to those we care about most deeply, but we don't see vulnerability as essential to living a courageous life. And yet in this passage, I think Jesus demonstrates that vulnerability is essential to courage and is at the core of the Christian life. Jesus invites us to discover the strength of being open to the needs of those around us. Jesus chooses the image of a hen gathering her brood of chicks for protection and safety to illustrate his love and concern for God's people. I'm struck by the power and emotion of Jesus' words to Jerusalem. How often I've longed to gather your children together like a hen gathers her brood safe under her wings, but you refused and turned away. Please note, here Jesus uses a feminine image for himself and thus by extension for God. This can invite us to reimagine some of our views about God. 
Here we see the great mother heart of God as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. This feminine imagery is also an image of vulnerability, of caring and investing oneself completely in the safety and well-being of her children. As a parent, you realize how vulnerable your children are. There's no way you can protect them from all the threats in life, nor should we. But also, you realize how vulnerable you are as a parent as you try to love them and protect them and nurture them. It is this characteristic that Jesus embodies and invites us to attribute to God, that God becomes vulnerable to all the circumstances of human life by being one with God's children through the Incarnation. Back to Jesus' use of animal metaphors in this passage. First, Jesus calls Herod a fox. A fox is a predator, but a sly and crafty one. It's not a lion or a wolf. The fox uses cunning rather than outright power. And how does Jesus describe himself in comparison? As something powerful and magnificent and biblical? No, Jesus describes himself as a mother hen, not a rooster who will fight and defend its territory, or even a mother eagle who also could have gathered up her young under the shelter of her wings, but a mother hen who, while fear being fiercely protective and caring of her young, will spread her wings to protect them as best as she can and is prepared to sacrifice herself for the sake of her chicks. Ultimately, the mother hen is not a very powerful match for a fox whose favorite meal is chicken. <laughs> Barbara Brown Taylor asks, how do you like that image of God? If you are like me, she says, it's fine in terms of comfort, but in terms of protection, it leaves something to be desired. <clears throat> Jesus' choice of this image has helped me realize that it is our vulnerability that can give us courage and strength. Because you can and will do things for those you love that you simply wouldn't or couldn't do for yourself. And so Jesus continues to Jerusalem, not to prove himself a hero, not even to combat death and the devil, Rather, Jesus marches to Jerusalem and to the cross that awaits him there out of a profound love for the people around him, a mother's love that will stop at nothing to protect her children. Feelings of vulnerability are something that we might want to avoid. We do so want to be in control, but we know that much of life's circumstances are out of our control. Dr. Kate Bowler, professor at Duke Divinity School and the author of our devotional book that we are using during this Lenten season, knows something about the vulnerability of, of not being in control. In a previous book entitled, Everything Happens for a Reason and Other Lies I've Loved, <laughs> she tells of her experience with what she calls a life that veers over the edge. In the preface to that book, Kate writes, I used to have my own delusion of living my best life now. I am a Duke professor. I'm a wine and cheese enthusiast, I'm a wife and a mom. That is Instagram gold. 
Then I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. That was four years ago, it actually now is six. And I'm still here, Kate writes. And now I get it. Life is a chronic condition. The self-help and wellness industry will try to tell you that you can always fix your life. Eat this and you won't get sick. Lose this weight and you'll never be lonely. Believe with your whole heart and God will provide. But I'm here to look you in, in your, into your gorgeous eyes and say, hey, there are some things you can fix and some things you can't. And it's okay that life isn't always better. We can find beauty and meaning and truth, but there is no cure for being human. Recognizing our vulnerability can help us be more caring, compassionate, and courageous than we could be otherwise. Author Renee Brown reminds us that the word courage comes from the Latin cur, meaning heart, and defines courage as living from the heart, the willingness to embrace our vulnerability and our feelings of not being in control in order to be our authentic selves. This invites us to a kind of wholehearted living that comes from believing that as God's children, we are enough and that those around us are also God's beloved children and therefore deserve our love, empathy, and respect. Jesus embraced who he was called to be for the, for the sake of those he loved. And he invites us to be who we're called to be for the sake of those around us. We are called to be a community that lives wholeheartedly, making room to name our vulnerabilities with the confidence that God is with us and has given us what we need, including each other, to not only endure the challenges of life, but to flourish as we discover that God faithfully meets us in our places of vulnerability. Jesus promises to gather us up when we feel that our lives are out of control, when we are fearful or feel under attack. Nothing is outside of God's loving presence and redeeming power. And for that, we give thanks to God. Jesus marches to Jerusalem and embraces the cross that awaits him there out of profound love for the people around him. A mother's fierce love that will stop at nothing to protect her children. What a gift it is to be invited to share in this meal. Here we find signs of Jesus' love, the bread of life, and the cup of salvation. With communion, we are nurtured as a hen nurtures and protects her children. All are welcome to this meal. In this Lenten season, take these symbols and let us be refreshed. Let us join in singing our communion. Here is bread, here is wine.
Jesus was with his friends in the upper room on the night that he was betrayed. He took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This bread represents my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, and after giving thanks, he poured it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup represents the new covenant, which is sealed in my blood and poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we pray? Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you now to thank you for sending your only begotten Son, Jesus, to live on earth with us and to die for our sins. He is sinless, we are not. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As we take the bread and drink from the cup, we receive again the emblems representing the body and blood of our Savior. Thank you for this gift of remembrance and celebration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. share in the bread of life. And we share in this cup of love. As often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we remember the Lord's life, death, and resurrection, and proclaim his ongoing presence with us. I invite you to stand as you are able to sing our hymn of invitation, Since the Lord is my salvation.
an announcement. Those of you all that were here last week heard me invite you to a party in the library this week. So it's all ready for you to see, peek your head in, take a look. They're all available for checkout today. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. And now receive this blessing and benediction. Blessed are you who see things clearly, where struggle is everyone's normal. You walk among the fellowship of the afflicted, a club no one wants to join. And while this life isn't shiny, it does come with superpowers, superpowers of ever-widening empathy and existential courage that get you back up after another fall and a deepened awe at the beauty and love that can be found amid life's rubble. Like flowers that grow from the cracks on the sidewalk, these virtues blossom in you, and thank God for you. Blessed are all of us who struggle, for we are in good company, and we'll never walk alone. And now may the God who loves all of creation, especially when it's painful, and Jesus, our companion along this crooked path called life, and the Holy Spirit who loves to improvise in surprising ways, go with you, dwell among you, and give you